Hello, Metroconic Scholar. I'm Aiko, the modded Minecraft streamer and Trasmensa server owner. Today, I'll be teaching you everything you need to know about Tinker's Construct Smeltery in Sky Factory 4. All the information you need will be linked in the description down below. This video is a part of Sky Factory 4 playlist and modded Minecraft playlist. You can click the card on the top right to watch my modded Minecraft playlist. First, I'm gonna show you the basic porcelain melter. It looks something like this. The melter will contain three items. Using a fuel source, it will melt it down into a fluid. Cast it out into block or ingot with a casting basin or a casting table. So I'm going to show you how to build one of this. In order to make porcelain, you need to get porcelain brick in order to get porcelain brick, you need to get unfired porcelain. In order to get unfired porcelain, you need to get clay and bone meal. So one clay, one bone meal makes four unfired porcelain. The unfired porcelain inside of a furnace, smelt it and it will give you porcelain brick. Use the porcelain brick to make yourself a casting table. Next, make yourself a porcelain casting basin. After that, make yourself a porcelain melter. You can place it above a porcelain heater or a porcelain tank to fill it. Next, you need to make yourself a porcelain tank. The porcelain tank also retains the liquid when broken. If you have lava fuel in here, you won't lose it. To drain the fuel out, just right click with an empty bucket. And the porcelain faucet. The porcelain faucet can be used to extract fluid from a tank into the one below. They can be placed on the side or the bottom of a block. They can be activated either by right clicking or redstone. The faucet will pour until it runs out of fluid or until the tank below is full. So this is how to make a basic porcelain setup. You first get yourself a tank, place it down, then place a melter above it. And you can see when you're doing it correctly, you can see the melter is activated with the uh, fire effect. If you've done it incorrectly, it will look like this. It is uh, not activated. Next, you want to place down the casting table. I like to put the casting table on the right and the casting basin on the left. You only need one, you don't need both. You can always have a casting table without the casting basin. Next, you want to put a shift right click to place the faucet um, to the side, to both sides of the porcelain melter. So that's how you have a melter set up. Um, this is the basic beginner porcelain melter. I will be demonstrating with gold. As you can see, when I right click onto the faucet, it says the amount of liquid being um, poured out as well as the conversion, zero to 100. When it is at 100%, it turns into a solid form. You can also do this uh, over on the cast and basin. When there's not enough molten gold inside, so if you wanna continue, just simply right click. It won't convert into a solid block if there's not enough molten gold. As you can see, I do not have enough molten gold, so I'm going to do this. This is better than using a traditional furnace because every gold amber will be giving you two ingots. So by doing three gold amber, I'm getting six ingots, which is better than uh, cooking it in a traditional furnace. The process is slower the more ingots there are, so it takes a little bit longer to convert into a gold block than it is to convert into a gold ingot. You can see the amount of fuel you have over here on the right side. If you have different types of amber within the melter, it is going to say uh, different in fluid in melter. This is because the porcelain melter can only store one type of melter. Uh, when my capacity is full, I cannot melt anymore. Not enough free space. An uh, item cannot be molten. There are certain items that cannot be in uh, in the uh, Tinker's Construct smelter. It can exist in a liquid state, but it cannot exist in um, Tinker's Construct. So do watch out for that. Certain um, certain item cannot be used in the Tinker's Construct um, smeltery. Yeah, Tinker's Construct smeltery doesn't work for all types of metal. So make sure to check which one can be turned into a molten liquid state. Moving on to the intermediate, which is the seared brick smeltery. Yeah, Tinker's Construct seared brick smeltery. When we talk about Tinker's Construct smeltery, we are mainly talking about this type of smeltery. You can click the card on the top right to watch my Sky Factory for how to get started with Tinker's Construct. Material and you. This is a very 
interesting and useful Tinker's Construct book. I highly recommend you craft one of this. It is one book and one blank pattern. Two wooden plaques of any kind, two sticks to make yourself a blank pattern, combine it with a book, and you're, and you're going to get yourself a material and you Tinker's Construct manual. Okay, with that, it's going to show you the intermediate way to make a Tinker's Construct smeltery. So when we talk about Tinker's Construct smeltery, we are mainly talking about this type of smeltery right here. The smallest size for the smeltery is going to be 2x2, so it's going to look like this. There is a difference, you can't do the melter technique anymore. For the smeltery, the smallest size is 2x2, two two, and the biggest size is 11x11. 11 11. So the interior is 9x9 9 9 from, from this block. Okay, let me zoom out. From this block, it is 9x9, 9 9, and from the outside, it's 11x11. 11 11. The biggest Tinker's Construct smeltery, any bigger than that, and it's not going to work. The smallest size is 2x2. Two so if you, uh, I'll show you how to build but before that I'm going to show you uh, every part and what each part does and how to craft them first if you have JEI you want to type in smeltery in the JEI S M E L T E R Y smeltery this is going to show you everything to do with the smeltery except for the faucet because the faucet is the outside thing but you still need the faucet okay Seared stone from this group all the way to this group right here. It says part of the smeltery, safe for decoration. That means it is used up, um, used to build the smeltery, but it is an um, it's like the muscle of the smeltery. It's like the structure, the bone of the smeltery. So you can craft it by. You can simply craft it by, uh, I recommend crafting the bricks because it looks the best, but honestly, you can use whatever, uh, whichever one you want. I recommend using the seared bricks because it looks the, um, the cleanest of all the option. And it is the easiest to craft as well. In order to get seared bricks, you need to smelt grout. To craft grout, you need to get one clay, one sand, and one gravel. That's going to make one grout, okay? cook up grout and you're going to get yourself the uh, seared bricks. With, with the seared bricks, you can craft yourself seared bricks. I know it is confusing, but that's the name. So all of the, any, um, now let's go into the brain of the smeltery. The smeltery controller, eight. The smeltery controller is made with eight seared bricks like this and you get yourself a um, smeltery controller. Next, you wanna get yourself a sear tank. The sear tank is the heart of the smeltery. It is the fuel. It's uh, eight sear bricks with one glass. So you get yourself a sear tank. Next, you, there's multiple sear tank within the group. You can get the uh, heart of the smeltery, which is the seared gauge, which is um, more glass and less sear bricks. And then there is the seared window, which is 30 glass and six seared bricks. They act the same, they do the same thing, but they look different. I'm going to showcase what they, uh, what what each of them look like. So they are considered the heart of the smeltery. So you can use one or the other one. You don't need to use all three. And you can use all three. So this is what the seared gauge look like. This is what the seared window looks like. And this is what the seared tank look like. They all hold the same amount and they do retain the liquid when broken. Game mode survival. Okay, so let me demonstrate with um, liquid. So that's gonna be blazing perotheum. This one is gonna be lava. And this one is gonna be, uh, let's say, uh, molten gold. So you can place down pretty much any type of molten liquid inside of the tank. They hold four bucket worth of those liquid and you can um, break them to move them around. They still retain their liquid. As you can see, all 30 of them are acting the same. Okay, they just look different. Now, let's put them back. Okay, you can also shift right click. Within Sky Factory 4, you can also shift right click to pick up the blocks without breaking them. This is going to allow you to keep the liquid inside. Now that I showed you that, next let's move on with the casting table. This is the same idea. Next is going to be the casting table. In order to craft it, you need, you need seven seared bricks in order to make a casting table. This can be used to cast any molten meadow from the smeltery. Next is the cast and basin, which is a uh, cast molten metal from the smeltery as well. But this is for a block. Acts like a cauldron as well, so you can put stuff inside. 
You can also store liquid inside of the casting basin, just like a cauldron. Drain fluids in and out uh, from the smeltery and Tinker's tank. Okay, there's another card to the top right linking you to Tinker's construct furnace and Tinker's construct tank. That will be a separate video. Now I'm going to show you how to build a 3x3 Tinker's Construct Smeltery. The height is um, any height you want, but I'm going to show you 3x3 because I feel like this is a good enough um, smeltery for most situation for uh, Sky Factory 4. The smeltery excels at doubling the ingot from the amber. That is what it excels at. You can also do, you can also combine it to get alloy and Tinker's Construct armor as well as very useful tool. That's what Tinker's Construct um, smeltery is mainly used for. So that is the pro. The con of Tinker's Construct is it is difficult to automate, uh, automate it if you, um, if it's not specialized. So you want to make a lot of Tinker's Construct uh, smeltery instead of one very big Tinker. Uh, one big smeltery. You want to make multiple small smeltery for each type of alloy instead of making one big smeltery with one type of alloy. Certain alloy does make together to turn into new alloy and because of that, draining out will be a, a huge pain. I'm gonna show demonstration on screen um, why it is a huge pain. Uh, seared glass. Seared glass is also a part of the smeltery, save for decoration, but it has a bonus that you can see within the smeltery, making it very uh, good looking. For the floor, it must be seared, um, it must be a part of the, it must be in the group a part of the smeltery, it cannot be any of the heart or the um, cast or the brain of the smeltery. Okay, now, you wanna place down a controller in the center, and the controller should be uh, looking like this. You do not need to fill up all the blocks, so you can have the corner side uh, missing and the bottom side missing. It just has to be filled in within. And the amount of space inside the smeltery is going to be the amount of uh, item it can store and melt. Okay, just like that. For you can place the smeltery tank anywhere and it will work. Uh, Disclaimer, you can only have one smeltery controller. You cannot have multiple smeltery controller. You can only have one smeltery controller. If you have multiple smeltery controller, the, um, the smeltery won't work. Next, you want to place down a tank for convenience. I'm going to place it to the left side, but you can place it anywhere a part of the build. I want to do this for convenience, so I'm going to place down a drain up front so I can show you. But you can place down the drain anywhere you want a part of the build, to the side or to the back. It's just for convenience. And a note, whatever this little square thing is facing, that is where the liquid is going to flow in from. And the little circle means it is going to need a faucet or a channel to flow out of. It can flow out of any side, but I mainly use the front. I only use the front for um, easy convenience sake. Okay. Now for the rest of the build, just simply fill it up with seared bricks. Like I said, just fill it up with seared bricks. You do not need the corner piece, so you can just break that off to save yourself a resource. The amount the smeltery can hold, the capacity, depends on the amount of blocks inside. Right now it's 3x3, three three, which means this can store 9 items. When you see the smeltery controller light up like this, you know it is working properly. As you can see, when we uh, click on it, there's 9 slots, and the capacity can hold 72 molten... Uh, you can have multiple different fuel source for the smeltery. It is only going to it is going to prioritize any fuel source that is uh, that is convenient. So it will it will prioritize lava over anything else. So if you have um, lava in the seal tank, it will use lava. Yeah, it will use lava instead of uh, blazing pyrothium. But blazing pyrothium is going to be extremely fast for the smelt. Okay, now you can just place in the gold, just like the porcelain smelter. It is going to melt and it is going to appear right here and turn into gold. When it is in molten state, you want to not jump into it because you you will take damage. When it is empty, you won't take any damage, but when there's molten uh, liquid inside, if you jump in or if a mob jump in, hostile mob or any entity jumps in, it will give you blood. Um, and it is super annoying, so you want to wall off this area so no mob can jump in. Before I do anything else, you want to go get yourself a faucet. 
uh, I want to get the faucet. In order to craft a faucet, you just need 30 bricks shaped like a bucket and you'll get yourself a seared faucet. Simply right click onto the drain, uh, just like that, and it's going to work just fine. Okay. Now I want to make myself a gold cast. I will be using gold. It will consume the cast. Okay. Yeah, it will consume the cast. So do watch out for that. Now we have a uh, basics. Uh, Basic smeltery, basic 30 by 30 smeltery, and this can be any height you want. Now I'm going to show you with um, the glass what it looks like when they combine. The texture is seamless, so you can just see the smeltery. Now it is going to be uh, 30 by 30 by 2. And with that, we now have double the amount, 18. Now we can smelt 18 ingot at a time. Okay. So here's another thing to do. You can use uh, multiple seal tanks. Um, so right now we only have the capacity uh, fuel for one lava bucket, four lava bucket when there's only one. So if you want multiple fuel source, if you want multiple lava bucket, you can just um, place it down like this. It is going to use the lava. Like I said, it is gonna prioritize lava just like that. Yeah, multiple source. It is all going to work accordingly. As you can see, the fuel, let me just break this. Uh, if you want to, this is just a visual, um, visual thing. You don't actually lose any of the liquid inside as long as you don't break the smeltery controller. When you break the smeltery to upgrade it, or if you want to expand it, as long as you don't break the smeltery controller, all the liquid will come back as soon as you place down the uh, missing block to complete the smeltery. As you can see, it is now back. If you want to drain, let's say, cobalt, you just simply have cobalt listed at the bottom and right click and it will drain the cobalt. If you want to drain, let's say, gold or osmium, just click on it and it's going to switch. This is why, um, this is very good if you're doing it manually, but for automatic, for automation, this is the, uh, the main problem, why automation is uh, a thing. This is the main problem why automation is annoying because there's multiple types of um, ingot in here and if let's say you drained out almost um you drain out something it's almost empty but there's not enough it's going to get ca uh, clogged let's use blood for example right now we can drain out the blood because there's not enough blood um which is really annoying if you want to get rid of all the liquid inside simply break the smeltery controller this will get rid of everything um inside of the smeltery if you break any of the other blocks it will only show as a visual um, that the liquid is not inside as long as the smell dirty stays nothing will be um, lost okay so it was really annoying so I'll show you how to get rid of stuff that you don't want you can put that you can put down a tank to store it if you don't want to be wasteful but if you don't care about it too much just go with a cauldron and then empty it out for me I don't want to be wasteful so I'm gonna get myself an empty tank select the blood that I don't want right click on it it's going to drain out the blood and now we are back to normal operation functioning without needing to stack or worry about blood getting inside of our, uh, our machine yeah so the fuel source up top is going to work just fine. Let's build a little bit higher. Yeah, just like that. Build a little bit higher. So once it's done using the blazing priotium, it is going to switch to the lava. So having multiple fuel source next to the um, controller is going to be very helpful. This video was recorded on my Trustmensis server. If you wanna play modded Minecraft with me, just subscribe to me on Twitch, Twitch TV, a go to Draco. Link and everything you need will be in the description down below. Uh, if you have any question or run into any problem, feel free to join my Discord and let me know. Comment down below what video idea you want to watch next. I will feature your comment in the next video. You can join me live at Twitch TV Ego to Draco every Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday at 9 a.m. EST playing modded Minecraft. Share this video with your friend. This is going to help my channel grow and allow me to continue making more modded Minecraft video. Subscribe to my YouTube and ring that notification bell so you never miss another upload for more Sky Factory 4 content. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you all next time. Bye!